Hey, what's up everybody? Matt here. Today, I've got another pattern for you from the request line. This one came from Luke Bumgardner, and he's asked me to tie a crackle back. Now this fly was created in the mid 1950s by Ed Story. And some of you might be familiar with that name. Ed was the founder of Feathercraft Fly Fishing. Now Feathercraft is a fly shop in St. Louis. They've really done a lot of business in mail order. They were one of the early mail order catalogs. I just got my 2022 catalog this week. Now, if you haven't shot with them before, definitely worth checking them out. Now, unfortunately, Ed passed away in 2008, but his son Bob still runs the store today. And it's a great outfit, not just fly tying, but fly fishing as well. So about today's fly, the Crackleback. And aside from having one of the coolest names for a pattern out there, it's really a great fly. Now it's an attractor pattern, not really meant to imitate anything, and it's primarily a dry fly, but it can be fished as a dry wet or nymph. And you can fish it as a dry and wet, actually the same cast. Just don't put floating on it, a couple of false casts and let it land where you want it to, and you'll get a good eight or 10 feet of a drift, then just let it sink, let it slowly sink, and then swing it as a wet fly through the rest of the cast. Or just put split shot on it and fish it straight up as a nymph. Now it's a really simple pattern, only three materials. You've got some dubbing, and you can use anything you want for the dubbing, any style, any color. Got a little bit of peacock curl, and then some brown dry fly hackle. And it is a great beginner pattern, but don't let that fool you. This is a pattern that we should all have in our fly boxes. So it's really cool, a really easy pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. There you go, in the vise, a crackle back. And if you've never tied this pattern, you're gonna love it. So many options, look at that body. That is an orange, bright orange yellow, but you can do it in anything you want. We'll get to that in just a second. This is a size 12, 1X long, barbless dry fly hook. And you can also use any color of thread. I'm gonna stick with black because I think black is just fine. So let's lay a base down to the start of the bend. And first thing I wanna catch in, some brown dry fly hackle. Either brown or furnace work. And a lot of the pictures of these I've seen had hackle that was maybe two times a, a hook gap. I don't wanna go that big. I tied a couple like that and I think it was just a little too much. So I'm gonna go maybe one and a half times. So create a little tie in point right there. Now I did snip off a few extra fibers on the far side of this right here. I don't think it matters the least bit in this pattern. And if you have a couple of fibers, you know, pointing back when you start wrapping it, it's gonna look just fine. So let's just try to prop this up a little bit right there and then either snip or just bury this stem right here. Take your thread up to the front and we're gonna catch in two strands of peacock curl. This is left over from the last fly. So what you do there, just a couple of tight wraps and if you leave enough, you know, uh, of a little tag right there, you could just break them off. And you do want to make sure that when you end, you end with this right on top or else when you wrap it up, it'll be a little bit off to the side and that'll look a little bit goofy. So leave your thread toward the back, put some wax on it. And this is where you have so many options. You can use a natural or rabbit or any kind of natural, any color. Uh, you can use synthetics or you know a microfine or superfine and also any color. I'm gonna go with this purple right here. We'll see if y'all can guess what this dubbing is. It's pretty non-traditional. I'll we'll put it on first and then see if you can tell. Maybe a two inch noodle, probably don't need three for this size 12. We'll see how this purple looks. This is the first one I'm doing in purple. All the other ones I've done were natural or yellow or chartreuse. Okay, who wants to guess what that purple dubbing blend is? Coyote. So why did I pick Coyote? Just because I haven't used it in a while and it's kind of cool stuff. Okay, next thing, let's wrap this hurl over, just right on top and catch it in with a couple wraps up here. Okay, so I got that little bit off to the side. Let's try to fix that. Okay, I think that will work right there. It's not a big deal at all, but 
If you can make it pretty, why not? So go ahead and break these guys off. Now let's just wrap this hackle. And we'll see if I have any fibers pointing back. If I do, I'm not gonna worry about it. And how close together to put these wraps totally depends on how high of a floater you want. If you want a real high floater, put them close together. If you want, you know, a little bit, um, to sit a little bit lower, maybe down in the surface film, put them a little farther apart. So I put them pretty close together. This is gonna be a high floater. I guess I would fish this guy through heavy riffles or fast water. There we go, let's catch this guy off. And I'm not worried if I have any fibers pointing forward. As long as I'm not covering up the eye of my hook and I can still get tippet in there, it's gonna be perfectly fine. So just a couple extra wraps on this head right here to get us some room for the whip finish. And there we go. Do I have any cleanup? I got a, a thread thing right there hanging off. I might need to snip that. But nah, I'm fine. I put a drop of head cement on this thing and put it in my box. So there you go, folks. Crackleback. Pretty fun little pattern. Super easy to tie. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.